Gaius Vibius Pansa Caetronianus, Consul 43 BCE. Of all the men in the last phase of the Republic who could have potentially greatly altered the course of history had their fate been slightly kinder, few of them were better positioned to shape the future than Panza. His date of birth is unknown, but it is known that he was a Noah's homo, a new man, and that his career was predicated upon his friendship with Caesar. His first appearance in history is as a legate in Gaul. In 51 BCE, Pansa was back in Rome to serve as tribune, and he used his office to protect the endangered interest of the absent Caesar. He successfully vetoed several bills unfavorable to Caesar, but once the Senate became belligerently dedicated to eradicating Caesar, Pansa could do no more and fled to rejoin him in Gaul. Pansa stuck with Caesar throughout the Gallic War, and had a similar experience as his later consular colleague, Aulus Hurtius. In 47, he served as the governor of Bithynia, which, uh, while it was an important province, was nowhere near the heart of the action. He returned to Rome in 46 and was nearly immediately sent to govern Cisalpine Gaul in 45. While he was still away in Cisalpine Gaul, Caesar designated him as consul for 43. At some point in the early 40s, Panza was appointed to join the College of the Augurs. The appointment of Panza and Herdius for 43 to be the consuls is significant since Caesar was planning on initiating a great conquest of the East in imitation of Alexander the Great and would need men who he trusted in charge at Rome. Herdius seems to have brought a little more military talent to the office, whereas Panza was a proven administrator and would soon have to try his hand at being a diplomat. Hearing of Caesar's murder before he got back from his office in Cisalpine Gaul, Panza stayed in nearby Campania to wait and see how the situation would develop. Going into Rome, Panza emerged as the leader of the moderate Caesarians, who wanted to let bygones be bygones with the conspirators. His chief opponent and the leader of the larger group of Caesarians was Mark Antony, who wished to eliminate the conspirators. Panza, like Ant liked Antony on a personal basis, he was actually Mark Antony's son-in-law, but wanted to limit his power over the faction, no doubt because such a move would enhance his own standing. Antony left Rome in late 44 to begin his siege at Mutina, apparently having been reconciled in some way with Panza. On January 1st, 43, Panza and Herdius took office and convened the Senate to debate. During the four-day debate, Panza advocated uniting all of the Caesarian factions and focusing their enmity on Caesar's murderers. The presence of nine Caesarians in the Senate, like Cicero, ensured that there were others who were not interested in promoting the betterment of the Caesarians. Besides, Cicero's antagonism towards Antony is well known, and he viewed him as perhaps the biggest single threat to the Republic. Cicero's eloquence seems to have carried the day, as did his friendship with Octavian, who had raised a formidable army consisting of his father's grizzled and pissed off veterans. The Senate decided to legitimize Octavian's army and attach more forces under Panza and Herdius and send the three of them out to fight Antony. It was the secret hope of Republicans like Cicero that all four Caesarian leaders would die in battle. At Mutena, the three armies arrived in what seems like a disorganized and poorly coordinated fashion. This makes me suspect that there was some political tension between Panza and Herdius, since they obviously did not coordinate their marches very well. The resulting Battle of Forum Galorum began with Antony pouncing on Panza's forces and mauling them, routing the four legions of new recruits. Antony had attacked Panza with only two legions, so this says a good deal about Panza's generalship. Herdius's troops surprised Antony, however, and managed to rout him. All three senatorial commanders, Panza, Herdius, and Octavian, were held as imperator, but unfortunately for Panza, he was mortally wounded, while his colleague Herdius was dead on the field. Cicero seems to have gotten more or less exactly what he wanted. Panza appointed his keister Torquatus as commander, who then had Panza's physician executed on suspicion that the doxer was poisoning Panza. While he was on his deathbed, Panza advised Octavian not to trust Cicero and the Senate as they would turn on him if and when a favorable opportunity arose. Octavian famously acted along these lines, so it can be argued that Panza's deathbed advice 
ranks among the most influential in all of Roman history.